Ready? Yeah. This is A Crab Science, and we're here to tell you about fish. Once upon a time, in San Diego, a coelacanth jumped into the water where he got evolution. Then he turned into Michael Phelps. Wait a minute, that didn't really happen. So what did happen? Well, if we knew, we would be Nobel Prize winners, and we would be very rich, and then you would all be our friends. But we don't, and we're not rich. We're just here to tell you about the differences between primitive and derived fishes. Did we just say fishes? Yes, the term fish refers to a group of fish that are all the same species, but the term fishes refers to a group containing different fish species. Oh. So now, what's the difference between primitive and derived fishes? Well, let's start with the meaning of primitive versus derived. Primitive species is a species that is most closely related to its ancestor, so it shares more conserved traits with the base of the phylogenetic tree. On the other hand, a derived species is one who differs more radically from its ancestors, and it appears more recently in the fossil record. So if they adapted, derived species are better, right? Wrong. Just because they're different doesn't mean they're better. Think about it. Are we better than a caveman? Maybe at playing Candy Crush on our iPhone. But we can guarantee that cavemen were better at hunting barehanded than any Orange County man is now. And we have fish finders. So why would we still have extinct primitive species? Why wouldn't fish just embrace every adaptation and get the best of both worlds? The word is niches. What? what? Imagine a foot with a suction cup on the bottom. Might be great if you were competing on Wipeout, but it would be less than great if you were an Olympic track runner. Natural selection acts on traits that are beneficial for a fish in its specific habitat and niche. Even species in the same family may have different traits depending on their habitat. So what kind of adaptation have derived fishes developed that are beneficial in their niches? Let's make a disclaimer. The adaptations we are going to discuss are in general. They are not specific for a fish or a specific habitat, but just general trends that have changed over time. So, what's in now? Here are some things that have changed. Don't worry, we'll go one by one. First, you'll notice the difference in the overall body shape of a primitive fish versus a derived one. Primitive fishes were likely more pelagic. They lived in open water and their body form was built for speed. As fishes inhabited new niches, Speed is sacrificed for maneuverability and the ability to hide from their predators. So, while primitive fish have longer bodies with a skinny head, derived fishes have all sorts of body plans, but are mostly short with almost half the number of vertebrae and with deep heads. As their skeletons changed, so did the placement of their pectoral and pelvic girdle. And what connects there? Fins! So, what would also move back? Fins! In a primitive fish, the pelvic fins are abdominal but in a derived fish, they are underneath the pectoral fin. So then, the pectoral fin must move too. The pectoral fins are horizontal and low in primitive fish, but move to a higher vertical position in derived fish. <laughs> so while we're talking about fins, primitive fishes have fins supported by soft pliable rays, but derived fishes have fins supported by stiff, sharp spines. Ouch! You'll also see a decrease in scaliness and an increase in overall spininess, including some species of spines on their head. Now let's talk about jaw protrusion. As fishes diversified, so did their diets. Fishes use everything from the worst to camouflage to acquire prey, but one clearly derived trait is the development of jaw protrusion and structure protruding. In primitive fishes, the maxilla was a large bone fused to the cheek. The maxilla functioned as a simple hinge with the dentary and minimal use of the premax. The maxilla was posterior to the premaxilla, but progressively, the premax got longer and began to overlap the maxilla. Related to the overlap, the premax began to bear a larger portion of the teeth. This trend continued until the maxilla became completely toothless and worked more as a lever with a ball and socket joint that allowed more jaw mobility. Using the mobile joint, and an extension of the premax called the ascending process. Some derived fishes can now protrude their jaws to capture prey more quickly and at a longer distance. Okay, so let's recap. Derived fishes differ in their body form, overall spininess, overall scaliness, fin placement, 
and jaw structure. Plus, other adaptations that make a salmon look different than a monkfish. <laughs>